Welcome back PC tuners to part 5 of the 386DX build. This portion of the project which you're about to see has taken about 2 hours of real time for a total of 5.5. Let's keep going. Another quick note about SCSI. Uh, sometimes it conflicts with sound cards. So I had this issue just now. I put the sound card drivers in and pointed to... I didn't read what the default was. Here it says 330H, which is the exact same base address as the SCSI adapt deck uh, card. So you gotta pay attention to these things. It's, uh, this is where SCSI gets a bit difficult and this is actually a fairly simple setup. Uh, I have multiple SCSI devices on my other computer and it is a nightmare. Even setting this up is kind of like, huh. But in the end, reliability, the performance of the SCSI and just the, that hard drive noise. That was grueling challenge. Not as bad as I thought, but there were some hiccups along the way with uh, the interference between the base address of the MPU-401 and the base address of the SCSI AHA-1540, which was resolved by just me picking a random address in the setup. I believe I put the address of the MPU-401 to 336 three, or something like that. Anyways, now it's time to turn it on and see the complete boot process. After running MemMaker, we'll test the sound card as well. And I haven't actually configured the Windows driver portion of uh, the sound card. I, I don't know, it should work, but anyways, here we go. So I'm going to pause it here for a second. You can see the base address is not oh, to be pause it. All right. What's going on here? Oh, couldn't pause it. In any case, uh, look at this. I just wanted to show you something before I continue. I've never seen. I think it's in config sys. Such a ridiculous sound card entry. Look at this. This is this line here. Let me zoom in on. This line here, right, right here, AD1815-6SYS, all of that is used to configure the sound card. That's, I, I've seen weird stuff with CD-ROMs before like that, like the driver that attaches, that drives the CD-ROM from the sound card being a little bit strange, but that, that's, wow. All right, let's do a demo of, see if the sound card works. Uh, let's pick an easy one. Let's do Wolf 3D. Let's check how much memory I have available. Oh, enough. Okay. picks it up as a sound blaster, so that's good. Now I will go through the boring task of installing the Windows driver on it and testing that. Ah, actually we'll do one more demo. Uh, Doom. See how it actually runs on this, keeping in mind that the craptastic 512 meg video card, K, K, not meg, video card is installed. But it's an oak card, it's, it's, it's just in there for test purposes. It's gonna get taken out. That seems to be okay. See how the playability is on this. Actually, it's not that. I mean, it's going. I don't know how much, how well you can. Yeah, you can see that well on the camera. It's not ideal, 
but it's certainly playable. Reducing the screen size. Yeah, I could do better than that. Let's do one less than. Yeah, okay. Need some gamma adjustment, but I mean I haven't configured this monitor for, for this kind of this kind of play. It's just a basic display for DOS. What is this guy? Let's see what happens when you turn the turbo off. This is how I remember playing it as a kid. Yeah, it's choppy, but I may do. Right, I'm put the turbo back on. It's a little bit ridiculous. So I believe a uh, better video card will definitely help here. All right, on to Windows. Just a quick installation of the AD1516 drivers for Windows. We'll uh, test those out after the installation is complete. Now here's what I was talking about, the base address for the MP MPU-401. I don't know why it doesn't just pull the auto exec and config system, whichever one these are displayed in, but uh, yeah, it's running the default to 330. You do that, and the ASPI for DOS drivers will not even load, and the computer will halt. So, some of the things, I mean, I could just disable it. Uh, I picked uh, this one, this range for the DOS one, for the DOS port version. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do the same thing in Windows. Why change it? The game port is on, the OVL3 port is on. IRQ will share the SSDMA shared with SSPlay. Sure. Alright, anyways. Let's make sure that. What's this? Extra device, also at 300H. Oh, I don't know, that might cause some problems. Hmm. Just what is extra device? I'm really not wanting to. Okay, you know what? We'll do it, and it's not a hard thing to edit the WinAny file. Alright. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. No, because those are already loaded. It's already there. I've already had that. Restart now. That's uh, is that a warning or is that a command to the computer? Anyways, let's just restart it. See what we stand. Three clicks. I'm gonna fry. I'm gonna do a hard reset as the BIOS needs to initialize. The SCSI BIOS needs to initialize. Let's see if I can get that a little bit more inclusive of the entire screen. All right. Another quirk with this is. Uh, if you have a hard drive, uh, an IDE hard drive, for example, this one right here, we all know what that looks like, uh, installed SC, it will install the SCSI drive as a, as a D drive, as a secondary drive. I, I'm sure there's a way, but I haven't found how to do it, where, well, you have to disable the BIOS on it, so it boots from the C drive and then it takes over on the SCSI drive as a slave. The problem with that, the problem that I was having, I needed to copy some files over from this uh, compact flash arrangement that I have here, which is IDE. So the way I got around that, I'll just keep this, keep this booting here. The way I got around that is I had to make a boot disk. Uh, where is it? This one here, which uh, loaded command.com and an auto exec, no, can fix this file that pointed to Hymem says, then I loaded Windows, then I copied the files, which was without its problems also, because the C drive that it was calling for the group files in Program Manager was not actually the C drive, it was the D drive, so I had to manually run winfile.exe, move stuff over. Yes, I could have done it manually, 
or with DOS shell, but this is the way that I chose to do it. So, again, this wouldn't have been a problem in an IDE system, but uh, welcome to the world of small computer systems interface. I hope I said that right. If not, annotation here. All right, let's see what happens. Are we gonna make a noise? Yes, all right. Let's see if we can run Sim Farm. Hearing nothing yet. I think we need to uh, uh, turn on the sound. I believe that's how that works. Music. Here we go. And sound. I hear something. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so that is installed. So I'm not going to bother playing it. It's an login involving game. So the only other hardware change I have to do here is the video card, and the next step will be largely putting all of this mess into a container that, well, all of this inside of here. I also painted the cover, which looks really good over there, but I'm not going to put it on yet until I have the proper video card. That will, as of, as of today, will probably arrive in two weeks. I gotta travel to another city to get it. I'm not willing to do that just for the card, so I'm gonna meet up with a friend and also go to a wedding. So that works out. Come back with uh, good memories and a one meg ISA video card. All right. <laughs> 